Hey guys, and welcome back once again to the channel. Been a little bit of time, but um, been a little bit of time. I feel like I'm talking weird, but that's okay. Gonna be starting with uh, Jurassic Cup 2 now, finally, which is exciting. As is customary, we're gonna begin with uh, Group A here, and it's gonna be between A Game Inks in Group A, of course. He did, in fact, win the last two tournaments, the ones that were uh, how do you say the ones that factored into like the seating. So naturally, he'd be the one in Group A here. Um, but if you remember the way the new seeding system works, the uh, the players in group A are kind of like the, the top players, right? So you have number one, and then you have number five, which is like the top, uh, it's like the top second place, if that makes sense. And then you have like number nine, uh, and then number, I can't do math, but you can figure it out. So <laughs> these players are in kind of a comfortable situation, but they're going to have actually very difficult games with each other, I guess is the idea. Um, but they're definitely vying for the top spot as we move into the brackets here. Um, speaking of top spot, it is A Game Inks. Uh, like I said, the winner of the last two tournaments. His opponent going to be God Hates Weaves here. Both playing Soban. That's pretty cool. You don't see that every day. A Game playing random, of course. So, you know, you never know what he's going to get. But it is Soban this time. Support Cruiser first from him. Looks like 7 up. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, you might see 6 up on Torrent. Or, yeah, 6 up on Torrent Creator sometimes. But, um, not against Soban, really. So, yeah. This is pretty standard stuff. God hates weeds, what's he gonna do? We have uh, seven salvagers here, eighth is being produced, so he might just be doing an eight up build. He, Okay, I thought he retired the base burner. No, he didn't. The guy's just chilling out over here, having a grand old time. This is in the middle of the death crater, but it's not very deadly just yet. God hates weeds, um, generally playing uh, pretty consistently. I think he goes for that. Um, Goes for that kind of bomber snipe on the sport cruisers every time. It's pretty fun to watch, but against an opponent like AGMX, I don't know if he's going to be able to pull it off. And even if he does, uh, the advantage that you get out of that is going to have to be really big in order to... Oh, that's a little sloppy. The advantage you get out of that is going to have to be really big in order to beat someone like AGMX, you know what I'm saying? So, sport cruiser is out for A game, holding up that main as his carrier going to move out and hold the second. Fighter and Gunship Fabrication on the way for God Hates Weaves, uh, as we expected. What's his resources like? 150? So he's not really saving up for Sport Cruiser at this point. Um, making a couple of LAVs, in fact, as they kind of stream out across the map here. There's combat here? I don't see combat here. AGMX doing an interesting thing here I wanted to talk about with the targeting jammers. Um, he's not under attack, right? But he knows eventually he will be. Um, this is just kind of a nice place for them to be. It holds off the attacker really nicely, and then the second one, after the recharge is done, can just go there. Why not? That's something very new with the mod because that doesn't cost money, right? These targeting jammers are cool, but when they cost money, they're just like, meh. They can be good, right? They just aren't consistently. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> anyway, like I said, God Hates Weave's playing actually quite consistently, I think, but um, consistently not well enough to be like really top tier. But it's fun to watch his games because of this kind of fun style he's doing. He and Frosty should be playing the last game of the group stage tonight, actually. And then we can move on to the bracket, so... Yeah, obviously I'm a little bit behind, but I think it's alright. A little bit of micro going on here. Uh, A-game does have the, the healing advantage here. He's also got the ALMs, so it's unlikely that this is ever going to uh, result in really too much damage by God Hates Weaves. He can just kind of be here, make his presence known, but what he really wants to do normally is get a bomber to come out, drop on the sport cruiser, and then the LAVs just poke in suicidally and they can kill it. Um, but he's not making a bomber, do you see this? He's making a gunship instead. Not sure why, actually. Uh, we'll have to see. Agen's gonna be scouting here, he will see um, that carrier, so he knows. Yep, fighter and gunship is finished. No surprise there, but he does know it. Fighter and gunship coming out for Agen himself now. That's an interesting choice to, uh, interesting choice for how to fight it off. Because, like, how do I say? I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's going to take a lot of time. It's a very long tech. You look at missile battery, it's like almost half as, uh, half as long to tech up to. And the other thing is, we know it's going to be a gunship or a bomber. If it wasn't, um, if it wasn't God Hates Weaves, I'd suspect that some other tech was going to be picked there. Like, it'd be a bunch of strike fighters, and then A-game would be behind here. As it stands, this is actually going terribly. Um, <laughs> as you can see, that gunship obviously already dead. God, it's Weave's not going to be feeling terribly good about this. Uh, and the reason is because A-Game has just, of course, set down this anterior turret. And once he saw the probe scout that out and confirmed, yes, it indeed, it is going to be that airplay that he always does. Just go ahead and drop down a turret there. And a bomber wouldn't have had such trouble there, because they have more health. He can just 
drop the bomb, get out. Gunships have to, you know, sustain fire. So, I don't know. I feel like, uh... I feel like the choice of a gunship there as an early game unit is really just a little difficult to justify. Um... But yeah, I don't know. That didn't turn... Like, that didn't work out at all. That's what we should take away from this. And a game, um... Should be getting on the third base pretty soon. It looks like instead he's going to go for some aggressive play here with Assault Cruiser Fabrication on the way. Fighters are being produced by him too. Um, and this makes a lot of sense. I mean, hey, you've got the fighters already. So, aha, uh -huh, Teeth just came online. I think that means that that game is going to be played. Which is good news, Bears. Does that exist? I don't know. Point is. <laughs> yeah, so fighters being produced here. Um, Assault Cruiser Fabrication being teched up to. A game is not going under the third base. So, I think he's going to try to make a bit of a power play here. I don't see it yet, but I'm sure it'll kind of make sense as it starts getting, you know, done. <laughs> I talk weird. I, I own it, though. It's AV slaughtering people, by the way. 18 years I've been on this force, and they still haven't given me a name. He'll get one soon enough, though. One more kill, and he'll be a, he'll be an officer. This base runner here would love to extract. He's not going to, though. You can do a little bit of, like, preservation on the base runner using, uh... Well, there are railguns, but I don't think he will. You can do a bit of preservation using the targeting jammer, try to kind of slow down the, the... the damage input from your opponent, but there's not really much you can do here. Fighters are getting launched, I heard that. I'm wondering, by the way, I've never paid attention to this, but you know in Company of Heroes you can, like, hear a, a tank approaching from, like, across the map or something? Can you do that in DOK? Like, let's say my camera's over here, like... I can hear it because I have reveal all, like I know they're there, but can God Hates Weeds hear that? Can he hear the air units? Because if so, that's a thing. <laughs> but I, I don't know, I, I'll have to find out. Oh, you have so much to live for. You could be an officer, but instead you're just going to die. Anyway, that is going to be one dead support cruiser for sure. Smoke could be used here. Uh, certainly the micro is focused elsewhere though, and that's not really a problem. You got more important things on your plate, don't worry about the less important things, you know what I mean? Sport Cruiser does go down. Uh, artifact can get picked up here as well. Assault Cruiser Fab is done, but we don't see any coming out, do we? No, it doesn't look like it. Um, I don't know, Railgun Fabrication just finished there, I saw that. Uh, that's probably just a response to God Hates Weaves Railguns there. Carrier's moving out here. You don't want to do this, though, really, if you can get away with it, because you do hamper that third ba uh, main base eco, like, quite a lot. Okay, there's the Assault Cruiser coming out. I don't know. This is why I said I thought a game probably ought to have gotten a third base instead, just because, like, obviously he's trying to go with the momentum now. Like, okay, well, I've, I've done a lot of damage. I have the field control. Let's go ahead and, like, strike at the eco. And he did, right? But at the same time, uh, he could be on three base and probably doing the same damage if he didn't, or at least holding his opponent off of third, and then... I mean, you know, the push-in probably would work out, like, just with some more macro, more units, etc. So rather than trying to use the momentum to kill your opponent, use the momentum to build yourself up. But that is that is definitely just, like, how I play, so I might just be projecting that onto the games. Like, this is how it should be. Which This is working for A-game, too, so... Don't want to overanalyze that. He knows what he's doing, he knows what he's doing. This guy was, yeah, he's like shining blue there. That usually means he's getting healed. Probably just a graphical effect, like a little bug. It is just mistake. These guys are, these guys are officers. Ford. Yeah, he gets around. Stole's my favorite though, everyone knows it. AC is out. Beautiful unit. Way more relevant in the patch, although I've got to say most of the units that a game has buffed in the patch because they weren't really relevant in vanilla People have used them now and now they use them in vanilla too, and they're still definitely like not I feel like they're not as good as they should be But we're seeing them kind of shine in vanilla games where normally you wouldn't expect that they would so that's pretty cool to see actually <coughs> Assault cruiser I gotta say when this thing is used properly you just feel like what am I supposed to do about you know it's it's really uh really like a nice shutdown unit but not overpowered I wouldn't say there was one time where it was really underpowered they uh he nerfed the damage on it to try and like kind of rein it in and then it turned out it just it couldn't kill strikecraft anymore so it was like isn't that your only job you know like <laughs> um well not your only job but 
In fact, I guess the idea with Assault being in the name of the unit is that it does multiple things. But my point is, it was really bad. That, that was not good. <laughs> A-game will know what I'm talking about here. So what's going on on the field? Power Reserve 2 is coming out now. I think another Sport Cruiser is finishing, so that's why he's moving the carrier out here. Maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. A gunship is launching, actually. That's interesting. There is anti-air, right, with this missile battery? Gunship is not as tanky, actually, I think, as I think it is in vanilla. Uh, maybe I could be wrong about that. I think, though, the idea is it has more armor but less HP. I'd have to actually check, and I mean, that would take effort and such. These guys aren't even mining. They're just kind of slacking. Yeah, the Ecos are actually even right now. <laughs> That's a little funny. Um, a game perhaps made a mistake then, like, accidentally clicked out here. He's, he's backing up again, so that's why I say that. But Power 2 is finished for him. Artifacts are beginning to be picked up. Um, second one is on the way now. Uh, AC is headed up for the backstab. There's actually nothing there yet, but there will be a bit. Uh, like, actually, pretty much now, because you can see that Spork Cruiser are moving out. Um, artillery Fab finishes for A-game. So, it looks like he is, like, po poising for the power play, you know? He's getting the right text for it. He doesn't actually have rails at all, I don't think. Looks like perhaps he just doesn't really want to use them. Uh, but Artillery, Assault Cruiser, um, and Carrier, that's definitely good for a power play. You have to be a little careful with that if you don't have rails with it, but... But, I mean, you're going to do some serious damage there. These guys finally get off their lazy butts and start mining. Holy goodness, the stuff I have to deal with. And <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's good. A Soul Cruiser Fabrication actually finishes for God Hates Weebs now. That's interesting. I wonder what he wants that for. Well, actually, i got to say, if you don't see rails from your opponent, that's not usually a bad move. Yeah. Maybe that works. Maybe that works. Um, because there's tons of LEVs here, AAVs out as well, and Assault Cruisers from his opponent too, he doesn't know that, but, uh, Assault Cruisers do well against Assault Cruisers too, they die really fast, and so, if you're the defender, that usually is to your advantage. Artifact Extracts, Scorland's now 2-1, I think it should be pretty obvious, like, A-game's just kind of in control of this game here, he's sort of dictating the terms of everything, I suppose. But it's been very passive, very safe, we don't see any, like, uh... Uh, Attack Missile Barrage is kind of a miss there, that's unfortunate. Would have been better off using that uh, overcharge ability there. But yeah, he's playing very safe. Um, he knows he's ahead, there's no reason to kind of style on his opponent, you know, he'll just kind of build up, make sure he's very comfortable, come in, take him out. It seems very clinical, you know, we've seen this many times, so. Another Sport Cruiser does go down, there wasn't anti-air there, there wasn't really anything covering it, but uh, it's just tricky when you're in that scenario, like, you kind of have to do that if you're going to not fall behind, so, I mean, I don't really blame God Hate Sweeps for that. A Soul Cruiser comes up here, he could strike at the Eco with this, oh no, oh no, I can't tell you how many times I've done this, oh no, ah, <laughs> oh, feels bad, man, <laughs> yeah, okay, so, basically, basically, <laughs> uh, it's just terrible, you hate to see it, you hate to see it, um, so, the way that hotkeys work in DOK generally, from what I've seen, and this is pretty gutsy from these LEVs, by the way, just like, shunk, flying right in there to kill the Assault Cruiser, but they're a little bit late, he was actually able to fire shots back on them. Anyway, the hotkeys in DOK are like E, R, T, C, well, C is actually for cruisers, so it's down, but you get the idea, they're right in a row, yeah? You have W, and then you have E, R, T, so... That makes it really easy to click on them because they're all close to each other. But what happens like every time to me, and this one's on purpose, I'm sure, but is I'm trying to hit the attack missiles and I hit R and then he starts healing just like in the middle of the battle and you're like, uh, it's not exactly what I had in mind. So the interesting thing about this heal ability though is that you can't cancel it. And so that's why like God Hates Weave sent these LAVs in here is because, um, the LAVs can actually kill it really, right? If he's healing, cause he can't fire back. His armor is 12, but their damage is higher now, so like this guy's armor is lower and their damage is higher, so they can actually do meaningful damage to it too. And so yeah, you can actually kill an Assault Cruiser with its counter units if it's healing like that, you know what I mean? So I've talked so much about this, you can tell I, I feel like this game's already in the bag, otherwise I'd be like focusing a bit more. There are actually rails out here by the way, no upgrades though, not even Mag Accelerator. He, you know, he really doesn't need that in this scenario. I don't know, I might actually honestly just be building uh, artillery at this point. But yeah, it's only armor 1. No, no, it's mag accelerator for God Hates Weebs. Armor 1 for A-game. Uh, he's definitely got the eco advantage though in kind of an indisputable way, so I mean... 
Magnus Soder coming out now as well. It's good. These guys just flying around trying to be useful. <laughs> but this is this is obviously like a game ending siege here. Um, another artifact is going to get picked up as well. There's just really nothing God Hate Sweeps can build up to. So if he were to come back from here, I'd be astounded. That'd be astonishing. Fully expecting a game to go undefeated in this bracket, to be honest. Sitar. Wait, isn't that the name of like an instrument? Hold up, I'm looking this up right now. Sitar. Yeah, yeah, sitar. It's like a stringed instrument of the lute family that is popular in northern India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Oh yeah, I've heard this played actually. It's really kind of a beautiful instrument. Sorry to get distracted. I <laughs> There's this guy, uh, Ustad Shujat Khan. You should you should look him up. He makes really nice music with the sitar. It's like it's like if Dok was like super chill. That's like what he makes basically. You know what I mean? Because Dok is like. Uh, that same area, that's like where the Homeworld franchise gets its um, kind of influence from. We generally think of it as Middle Eastern, but it's actually... Well, that is the Middle East, I guess, but it's more like... Uh, kind of Northern India, stuff like that. There's a battle going on too, by the way. So this is Soul Cruiser coming in from the back as well. Just insult to injury. But that's that's basically what it looks like when, uh, when the hold capitulates. Um, eventually it will happen. A game does manage to crush in there. Carrier sitting at like 80%, very comfortable. Gonna be a nice game from him. I have game two already, so let's just go ahead and load that one in. This one's gonna be God Hates Weeb's pick, which is Firebase Krill. I actually was kind of expecting that. He seems to really like that map. Um, I think it plays well for a kind of his funny strategy, uh, which I kind of wish he had done in the last game. It'd be it'd be more fun. Gunship instead. I gotta say, I really don't believe in the early game gunship. Um, of course, you know God Hates Weaves is going to put in the comments here. It doesn't matter. I built a gunship. I win. But <laughs> I'm also looking to win the game, so... <laughs> oh, boy. Gunships are cool, man, but they just... You have to use them right, I guess. Because <laughs> in the early game, when you're attacking Eco, I feel like strike fighters can just do it better. And they're faster. And cheaper. And they don't die as easy. So there's really just not any reason... Oh, yeah, and they're also more useful on the field in the early game, too. So I feel like the gunship, a bit more situational, shouldn't really be used in that scenario quite so much. Anyway, we're getting back into it here. A game playing Galaxian this time. So Firebase Krill is a pretty big map. I think Torin Crater... Whoa. I think Torin Crater is probably bigger than it. But this one feels bigger somehow. And I think it's because in Torin Crater, you know, it's a very circular map. I mean, it is a big circle. And so the edges don't really feel like they get used at all. Um, but this is becoming one of my favorite maps, I think. Torin Crater was always my favorite. But this one is really fun, actually. I hope people know, by the way, I've mentioned this many times, but you can change faction between group stage matches. We don't usually see people do it. Um, this is a case where he has because he's playing random, but uh, I did it in my group stage games against Catharsis. You'll see those later on. You know, you can do that. That's a valid strategy. So I, I feel like some people should know that and probably do that a bit more often. It's early refiner mode from A game, but with no base burner retirement. Pretty aggressive scanner comes out. I've been seeing him do this uh, quite a lot recently. He's actually just trying to look for tech, apparently. Um, which is pretty cool. I, I didn't ever think of that back in the day, you know what I mean? But you don't have to build any sand skimmers or anything to pressure and see tech. You just kind of run up there early game. There's no stopping you and just toss it out. Uh, and you can basically see whatever your opponent texts you for like a while, actually. Because it's, it's kind of annoying to try to clear out scanners. They're not easy to kill off. That's my phone going off there. My frame rate's kind of tanking again, by the way. Apparently there's something wrong with my GPU. I just need to get it need to get it checked out. Fighter and Gunship does come out here now for God Hates Weaves. Now you might think A game's not going to see it, the LAV will deny, but the fact that there is no tech at this stage of the game and no support cruiser either tells A game already, yeah, it's Fighter and Gunship, I know it is. That's the tech that takes that long, that's that expensive, it's just, it's easy to read that, so. I think he'll know, um, but it's hard to, 
Hard to say what was going through his head, of course. Assault ship fabrication is on the way. I'm really worried that means uh, interceptors are on the queue. Because that would be... That'd be pretty sad for... <laughs> For God Eight Swedes, if your whole play is revolving around, you know, like this early game usage of air and then just interceptors come out and they're they're better in the air versus uh, the Galzian units or the Coalition units and then rip in pieces, that's all I can say. If I stay in the sensors, the frame rate is better, so... Ooh, yeah, coming in and out of sensors, it's like... <laughs> I'm gonna need to get this figured out because of uh, reasons. I'll talk about why later, actually. But suffice to say, before the anniversary of Homeworld, I'll have to figure out what, what's going on here and fix it. Because I'm going to do a thing. But anyway, Refiner Mode is finished, but this base actually just now getting filled out, but that's no pressure. I mean, God Hates Weaves is uh, getting a Sport Cruiser just now. I think A-game perhaps properly reading here that what he ought to do is get the counter to the air as fast as you can. So that means... Uh, oh, and you also have to worry about these LEVs too. So that means, you know, get um, Interceptor Fabrication quick. Worry about filling up bases and stuff a little bit later. Here it is on the queue, 70 seconds to tech. 70 seconds for tech bombers as well, and so... Uh, yeah, that's really nice timing for him. Obviously the bombers themselves going to take longer to build too, and the interceptors will launch out. They, they will do their damage here, and you know this is the, the strategy. These guys, you can't stop them from getting in and doing like maybe, you know, 300 damage or something. But that's all it takes to kill off the production cruiser, if it's moving and like microed properly. By the way, I, I should mention this again because I think most people still don't know. Um, what I discovered with God Hates Weeds playing so much is that uh, two bombers will kill a production cruiser, two coalition ones, right? If it's not moving, but if it is, they won't kill it. And so if, if you're getting attacked by the bombers, actually you should move the units because they don't lead properly and so you will actually kill off those units that are attacking you. These LAVs in a little bit of trouble here. They need to get up on the high ground, need to be attacking these sand skimmers. Ugh. Yeah, it's a little tricky. They're not focus firing, so they're going to get killed here. The other thing is that if they did do that properly, even still, there's five sand skimmers here, and this guy's going to use the base runner heal as they make the approach. And now, A game up on the high ground, and the base runner heal is popped, and this looks like another one of these magic A game moments. He's just got less units, but he's winning the fight. Oh no. This is bad too, because you know, a lot of the strategy of God Hates Weaves revolves around having this LAV strike force that can just come in and do the damage there. But he's not going to have that. Actually, really good micro attempt there to get the LAV under the base burner healing and uh, try to steal that a little bit. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be for naught. I think he does lose this fight. That's the A-game micro we're used to seeing. I remember back in the early days, I was always just astounded by what he could pull off. I was like, what the heck? You know, I remember this one moment in particular where, like, Sparrow, I think it was, comes in with, like, eight sand skimmers and A-game's got three. And he's just like, it's on Galzian territories, there's a dune kind of like this, but facing like that way. And he just like plays around on the dune right next to his second, and he kills all of them, and it's like, what's happening? Like, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> it's so funny, you know. It's probably weird for Aegon to hear this stuff, because he doesn't really consider himself that good, it's just that DOK has a pretty small player base, but I've always, I've always thought he was pretty good at micro. The A-game of these days is different from back then, of course, but yeah. I always thought A-game's micro is really good, the Scar's macro and micro are pretty much even, and then like... Yeah, that was kind of the dynamic between them, is you kind of felt like A-game had better unit control, but Discara you usually expected to have like the better game plan, sort of. It's a little different now, but that's definitely how it was back then. Kind of like a NIP, if you ever watched them in in uh, CS:GO, there was also always like this feeling that A game will pull through. You don't know how, but he will. You know, <laughs> he kind of had the A game magic going for him there. Gotti sweeps with two bombers, sees the interceptors. He actually loses the support cruiser, kind of turning the the thing on his head. He can't launch the bombers. You know that. Uh, what can he do? I mean, this is just a really bad scenario right here. Um, and I think it's largely to do with that early game scanner. A game was talking to me about this earlier, but I I hadn't seen it in action until just now. And I gotta say that is actually really good. He was saying it in response to my statement that I really didn't feel like there's really anything Conf doesn't have that Galzian do, and I was a bit worried about that. And he was like, well, I mean, scanners apparently are actually really good. I've just discovered so. Yeah, I guess I'll have to agree that early game tech scouting is quite effective. 
Well, this is better fabrication finishes, and he'll have anti-air now, I guess. Uh, things are still looking pretty grim here, though. Armored unit defenses are coming up, too. This is so bon, he's got Sunder on the carrier and a lot of power, wow. Oh yeah, from two artifacts and power one. I guess he would have that. But, at any rate, uh, these armors, like these assault ships here, they still will be rather hard to kill. And you imagine you could see, oh, the bombers are going to get out here. So what A-game should do then is move the production cruisers, so get him like moving sideways. Uh, not going to be like right here, so I think he will actually lose it. Oh, no, he's moving. Okay, here's a question. How about you move him for like half the bomb? No, he stood still. He lived. What? That doesn't usually happen. Huh. Huh. That's interesting. One bomber will go down. For However, I gotta say, that was the perfect time for God Hates Weaves to launch those things. So I'm, I'm glad he had like the presence of mind to make that move, you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, the interceptors are busy. Let's launch the bombers, get them out there, do the damage. And he did it. Didn't work though. This is why he always has that LAV kind of strike group moving around. Of course, this time he he's held back at his base. He couldn't, you know, capitalize. But he will get that kill if he's able. So it's really fun, you know, to see what God Hates Weaves plays. I should actually just try it myself at some point. But I'm also just kind of hoping God Hates Weaves becomes like some god tier player, and then this is like the meta. But <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't seem terribly likely. But you never know. You never know. Players just go off sometimes. So you could see an era of bombers <laughs> in the future, but we'll have to see. So, missile batteries up at the main. We're probably going to see what we saw last time. That is, um, A-game prepares an assault, takes them out, you know, a little bit slowly, but he's just playing very safe. This time it should be a bit more of like a smash, I guess. Because, like, should be a little bit more of a smash here because, uh, He's on three base to his opponent's one, you know what I mean? Still making interceptors though. Oh, Afterburner was cancelled. I saw him teching to that earlier, but he's teching to it just now. I mean, I don't think he needs interceptors. I would just go for Siege here, actually, or maybe Rails. Siege, I think, would be really nice here. You don't have any Railguns to deal with at all, and the, uh, the Assault Ships can actually deal with the AAVs properly. Looks like, yeah, he's gonna bust through the anti-air there. You see he just targeted that missile battery, just took him out with one volley, so... Of course, A-game knows the breakpoints really nicely. I'm never totally confident doing that in the mod because I don't know exactly how many numbers I need. And it changes quite frequently because the mod's constantly being updated. Not during tournaments, but between them, you know? And so I'm never totally sure, like, uh, how many interceptors do I need to kill off a missile battery, you know? How, is this actually safe? Stuff like that. But he would know. Very confidently, just comes in there, boom, pops him out. Armored assaults are going down too, sand skimmers are all up in the base here, and God Hates Weave's gonna go full YOLO, Pull, pops out there. Power Reserve 3 is on the way, I gotta say, this is kind of funny because it's like, yeah, just charge in and kill him, you know, but... Actually, you'd be surprised how many games you can win doing this. <laughs> Where, like, you've clearly lost, and then your opponent just is a little bit sloppy and you're able to pull it off. However, A game knows the response, so Power Reserves are on the way. Another production cruiser, uh... Probably doesn't need that because he doesn't have a tech unit. Like, he doesn't have tech yet that can actually um, do anything about the. Uh... He doesn't have tech yet that can do anything about the carrier. But, I mean, he, you know, he's got interceptors too in the bank here. So, power reserves, interceptors, carrier. You know, you're going to be fine. You will not lose this game. So, this is definitely in the bag for A Game X. Twas well played. This is kind of the expected result. I don't mean to be, you know, pessimistic when I watch uh, games from players like God Hates Weaves, but he's up against A Game Aches. It's one of the best current, you know, two-time champion, right? So, oh, the oh, 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 God Hates Weaves is the true winner. We all know it. We all know it. We all know it. Forgot about that bomber. But yeah, A game makes you know the two-time um, champion now, or how do I say, the two in a row champion. What am I trying to get at here? In fact, he won JC one as well, didn't? Or Car Cup eleven as well, didn't he? So, no, he didn't. Who won that tournament? Might have been me. No, I think it was Discara. Point is, A game's really good. So this is not exactly the unexpected result, but uh, I think God hates Weebs fought valiantly, but he should actually stick to his old guns. I think they were a little bit better than these new ones. Um, I think the fault in his strategy is more just in the execution. I think he it does have a good idea here. 
just needs some refinement, um, and I think you should stick with the two bombers into pick off a production cruiser or whatever. I enjoy watching him play, I really do. So, glad to see him in this tournament, glad to see him in this game versus A-Game it was pretty fun to watch. Hope you guys enjoyed it too, and I'll catch you next time.